Um, shall we get started? It's 7.02. Yep. Okay, so I'll call the meeting to order. Public comment for items not on the agenda. I had uh, one item. Okay. Sort of on the agenda, but not really. So I just want to put it out there. Um, I mentioned to everybody that the Friends of group was not able to put it together to do the guided tours of the town hall for the fall foliage weekend. Yeah. Um, so the Friends have decided to um, move forward and uh, open up a window of two hours on Saturday, October 24th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. to do, uh, offer guided tours to anyone who might be interested. Are you gonna, you're gonna post that on Front Porch Forum? It'll be posted on Front Porch Forum and an email will go out to anyone who's a member of the Friends group. And um, we'll keep it like we talked about before where each tour will last about 15 minutes, uh, minimize it to groups of around six at a time and uh, everyone will have to wear masks and use hand sanitizer and do the question protocol. And do you have enough volunteers this time? Yes, we do. Oh, good. That was the first thing we said is, you know, we can't do this unless we can get volunteers. So what weekend works for everybody. And that's how we ended up on the 24th. Okay, so we'll have good. one person outside um, coordinating people who are waiting to take the tour and then another person will actually be uh, guiding the tours. Okay, sounds good. All right, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay, um, we had talked about um, scheduling agenda items for Alfred. the board. Why do I hear, did I hear Alfred? Yeah, he's just now coming on. It oh, announces okay. that he's coming Join the meeting. I'll okay. go ahead and bring him on board and all right. So did the way we did it this last time, did that work for everybody? For agenda items? The only person I heard back from was um Cliff, I think, because he had something he wanted me to add. Keep doing it anyway, Denise. I know I thought Denise did what we Denise did what we asked her to do. Thank you, Denise. Keep doing it. We'll get better. Okay. Like I said, I'm not gonna babysit. Um so I don't know if Sandra is gonna join us or not, because this was yes, she is. She's coming on board oh, right now. Perfect. And we're going to need to call up the VLCT stuff, Cliff. Because mm -hmm. I, I did look at that and I had a couple of questions. Okay. Hi, Sandra. Hello, how are you? Happy, happy Indigenous Day. Happy Indigenous Day. <laughs> did you get to take the day off pretty much? I did. Good for you. Yeah. I am not hearing anyone. We're waiting for Cliff to call up the VLCT oh. stuff. Which document do you want to start with? I guess whatever for whatever one is first in the lineup there that Katie put in. Uh, that would be the property schedule. Yeah, like I had a couple. Start, I had a, would you like to start with the property schedule, Sandra? Well, yeah, sure. Perfect. Okay. Let me uh, open it and share it. Okay, you should be able to see it now. Okay, great. Um, so this is a list of all of the buildings are um, in the town and how much they're valued at. And then there's contents. <laughs> and I wanted to ask about, um, do we think the value of the- Is this in the shared folder? I'm not yes. seeing it. Yeah, yeah it is. There's a, there's a folder in the meeting folder called VLCT. Thank you. Okay, I'm looking. Oh, VLCT renewal? Yep. 
That's an odd name. Oh, yeah, I, I see. Okay. The subfolder. Okay. The um, which schedule? Okay. This is the property schedule, John. Got it. Okay. So do we think that the town hall value is accurate with all of the renovations? Um, that's the, that's the new value after renovations, right, Sandra? That's the value that we put on it last year. And so the building is in a different state of completion this year. However, that, that, that value may not need to be changed. For instance, uh, whether or not the floors were sanded and finished is not going to change the building value, that sort of thing. But I don't know what the difference, if the difference between the building now and last year at this time should make that value go up. And that uh, I reached out to John, I haven't heard from him. It's not really within my bailiwick to figure out a building value. I don't exactly know the difference between now and 2019 at this time. Mm -hmm. So that's why the select board really needs to decide what they think that building value ought to be at this point in time. In other words, the cost of what it would take to re build the whole building. I mean, the, the elevator alone is $30,000. And I don't think it was in le last year at this time. Again, I'm not sure. No, I don't think it was because that just got put in this, this year. So select board, do you think we should up the value? And if so, how much? I mean, I don't know how we, does, can VLCT come in and do an estimate? Well, is, is this the, go ahead, John. Is this the replacement value for insurance purposes or is this the real estate value? They can be very different. It this says guaranteed replacement value in the valuation type there, GRC. And that is the replacement cost without regard to the building value limit shown on the property schedule where the cost to repair or replace is no more than 4.5 million. And I think we're well below the 4.5 million um, threshold, or I should say ceiling. So, I, I mean, I, I, I might say 1.5 million gets it, but the, it's really up to the board. And again, the contents, I don't know. Maybe the contents is right. Well, there's not really that much. I mean, like I said, the elevator alone, I don't know whether they consider that contents or they consider that building value. If we were gonna replace the building, we wouldn't replace it with that building. Yeah, we couldn't so, because it's historic. So I would I think and the and I don't know what bearing the market has on this. Um but for the market purpose or market reason and because we've finished it more, I would go up a little bit. I don't know if I'd go up to one point five, maybe one point uh, one one point two, two and a quarter, you know, one point two five oh. Yeah, I was thinking um, one point three, so it's about so um, but it might be worth before we have to do this again, putting a tickler when our what is it, October? Yeah. So like in I don't know June having somebody come out and actually assess it. Who who does that? Is it the listers or is do we hire somebody? It's a post and beam structure. So I know when I uh, was evaluating our property before we bought it, actually this is an argument to convince my wife that it was a good value. I uh, provided the dimensions to Liberty Head post and beam. And this town hall is a post and beam structure. And they value, gave me a valuation just on the frame 
of the house and the frame of the barn. And just by way of comparison, in 2000, in 2000, our barn, which is smaller overall than the town hall, um, the frame alone was pushing three hundred thousand dollars. That's just the frame. That's without a crane to put it up. That's without siding or clapboards or foundation or heating system or standing seam roof. So if you get the picture, I mean, but uh, was it John? Say again what it was. I, I muted the wrong button just was, the time. It you was just this post and beam frame to replace that was about three hundred thousand dollars in two thousand. I would conjecture it's probably half a million for the barn, our barn. Yeah. So um, that the town hall structure is arguably much larger. Um, it's one, two, three stories and then some, um, and it's probably equivalent footprint to our barn. And then you got the foundation, you got the, actually the new insulated foundation and the heating system, the standing seam roof, the sheathing, the clapboards, the paint job. It's, it's easily, I mean, I think the frame on that would probably cost with a crane putting it up 800,000. And that's just the beginning, right? So yeah, I would say easily a $1.5 million replacement cost. But that, but that assumes we're gonna replace it with what's there now. Well, it has to do with your insurance. Right, exactly. Coverages. So, so if you were going to replace the exact building, you wanna insure it for what that value is. If you insure it as a stick built building, it would be valued much less. Exactly. I agree with that. But I think it's a, I, and I don't know, you know, what it costs to build it at its actual, or to insure it at its actual replacement value. Well, and if it were, heaven forbid, it were to burn down, we would want, I would think we would want to replace it with something that looks very similar to what is currently there. Well, well, the actual cash value always incorporates the idea of minus depreciation and probably wouldn't, you might not want to do that. So, so our, so so you know, that, that we, really limits the insurance company's liability. And then you're arguing over the amount of depreciation of the building. I, I think you guys are mixing things up. Um, so like we have insurance for replacement value on our home. Depreciation has nothing to do with it. It's the cost to replace the structure and a post and beam structure with sheathing and clapboards and build it e exactly the way it was. So you mm -hmm. would know the difference that it would look nice and new and shiny. Um, that but has, that's for insurance purposes, which has nothing to do with depreciation or tax write-offs or market value, frankly. I mean, frankly, that market value of that hall, you know, the, the value to the value to replace the cost to replace that hall is probably three times its market value, frankly. No, um, you're right. You're right. You're right. I shouldn't have brought I shouldn't have brought market into it. But I mean, I don't feel strongly about it. I'm not sure I agree, Denise, that if we lost that building that we would replace it. I mean, there's not a lot of examples of that in around where you know, something like that, when something like that's gone, it's gone, but so, uh, you know, I don't really. It doesn't it, matter if we replace the building. It's, it's, it's not about us replacing the building. It's that we get, we have it insured for its intrinsic value if we were to replace it so that that is an option. That's how it's insured. We could choose not to replace it at all. We could say, you know, the school is closing. We're going to buy the school for a dollar and put all our eggs in that basket for municipal purposes, um, you know, but we would still get that million and a half dollar insurance check and we could spend it on other stuff or put it in the bank or something. So what's, what's the difference though between, and I'm, I'm curious, what ha what's the implication of 1.3 versus 1.5 in terms of, is, it, is, is our coverage already, um, is do we already have coverage just from being a member or does that increase our premium? That was what I was going to ask. It seems you know, like it would increase our premium somewhat. I would yeah, think premium so. premium goes up, it's, it's not that much. It's not that much. Um, and 
I know my state farm premium that has the replacement value. And then there's a percentage over and above that um, based on, you know, you, it's the best guess. So let's say the replacement value of my house was 400,000, it burns down and it actually costs, you know, 500,000. I think they'll, they would cover that. There's is a percentage of the base value that they will go over and above it under a replacement cost insurance policy. So that's built into it. I, I would ex assume the league policy is built the same way, although I don't know. So the value, Sandra, if we were to increase the value to 1.5, do we just, do you just write that in there and then they send us a new premium amount? Yes, you, you would click change yeah. And you would write in the new building value that you would care to insure that. There is another, um, just so you know, you have property valuation options. So that column that says valuation type, notice that everything is at the guaranteed replacement cost. So you're paying premiums based on that until you get to the dock raft porta potty piece, then you have an agree an AV value. So you're agreeing to the value at that one. Mm -hmm. And you're 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 looking right on your property schedule. So there is a description that they provide for you that discusses what kind of coverage you are purchasing. And um, you know you could get historical reconstruction cost HRC. We chose not to do that last year. John thought that, that this guaranteed replacement cost was going to be just fine. So um, you can take a look at those definitions in the it, it's in your folder um, because those are options as well. So do, so select board members, are we thinking we want to increase that value to about 1.5 mil? And see what we get back with what the premium would be? Well, I, I guess so. I don't think it's going to go up that much, frankly. Um, I don't either. What is, our premium, now, what is our, our premium now, Sandra? I don't have the break. Uh, maybe I do. Let's look. So I'm looking at the guaranteed replacement Our, cost definition. You know, they, they, break, they don't break it out. They don't break out the premium per building for our uh, general, our general property premium is last year was 58.38. 5,838 plus the boiler at 472. And that's, that's how they do it. So I don't have a breakout. They don't break it out per building. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would, I mean, I, I, when we've increased our insurance on our homeowners insurance and stuff, it hasn't, the premium hasn't gone up excessively. No. We, we may want to ask what the difference is between guaranteed replacement value and historic construction cost, uh, reconstruction cost. I mean, what what is the difference in terms of level of coverage and what down to what level of detail each provides? And then what is the difference in premium cost per annum? Do you think that they would grant us an extension, Sandra, to have them 
help us and maybe they could come to the a next select board meeting and explain some of this stuff to us? Sure, uh, um, I feel certain they would. They may want a, pre my guess is they're going to ask for at least a preliminary application so they can get us into their pool. Yeah. And then we, we can tweak that um, with them. As I said, you do have a description of your coverages. It is mm -hmm. one of the, it's in your Google, file yeah yeah i remember looking at it and i'm sure they would entertain I, i'm sure they would uh come to a zoom meeting and yeah. just discuss that with you what i would suggest is that you you have your questions ready so if okay. you want to go up to one point if if you decide that 1.5 million is your mark then you would say, prepare them to say, give us the different premium for a building covered with historical uh, coverage as opposed to guaranteed replacement cost at $1.5 million. And again, a one, a one point, um, you know, one to 50, so that they could be prepared to answer your questions. It's looking like um, just my quick review of the historic reconstruction costs policy coverage it's not as as good a policy as the guaranteed replacement cost policy it looks like they they can pick the least of the least cost option of three options and one is the property schedule value valuation of property schedule so you know it's grand list value which was probably around half a million so we i i think i'm guessing if i'm reading it right that guaranteed replacement costs uh, policy is what we want to go with with that building okay so that's the true well, value of it to replace it so katie are you making notes of what we want to ask the vlct um with regard to this because i think we're i'm going to have i have some more questions on this on this form hang on though john hang on i read i just read it too it is it's not a or b or c it's a, but if the materials, workmanship, and architectural features are not available, then it means B or C. It says and the least of the following. That's the first that's the right. language. Yeah, so that's badly done because then you reach that, that the end of that sentence says without deduction for depreciation, period. In the event that such materials, workmanship, and architectural features are not reasonably available, historic reconstruction costs means one of these two other things. So, so the least of the following is not, I, I would not give that a lot of meaning in the way the rest of the paragraph is constructed. Um, dangerous language, if you ask me. <laughs> I would say let's go to 1.5 million and and say we want it's 1.5 million historic reconstruction costs and see what happens and next year get somebody on the calendar earlier. Why would we why would we go with that go with and not the guaranteed replacement costs at 1.5? Guaranteed will get us 100% without question. Right. No right. Okay. Actually, All right. 130 if 130% that's that. Remember, I told you there was that that variance percentage. They go up to one hundred and thirty percent. Yeah. So that's standard insurance language. Okay, so let's pencil in one point five for that, and if we can go back to that same document, I think the town office isn't high enough either. And I think they valued that at. 274 something thousand. We increased that number last year 75. to that 275. So, okay. I, you know, I don't, again, this is not, this is really what the board has to work on. Yeah. What are you comfortable with? It doesn't seem like that building could be replaced for that money no it doesn't seem like it nor the contents does anybody know the square footage of that building the town office yes i don't 
John, do you know? I do not. It looks probably like a 30 by 40. And what, are, uh, what are construction costs right now? Is it like 175 per square foot, 150? Probably 175. 200, I mean- Do you know anybody contractors, Sandra? Pardon me? <laughs> Do you know um, any contractors? I do. I, Buzzy typically will quote people 200 per square foot, but that's residential and this is commercial. So I don't know if that should go up or down actually, because the level of finish is not as nice as maybe a home. At so, that. Let's do, so let's do 175. What do you get? What was that again? 30. To, I just erased it. 30 times 40, 30 by 40. At 200, it's 240. Oh, well, there you go. Hmm. All right. The contents value really seems low. Yeah, it does. Yeah. With all, I mean, the vault alone was like 10 or $20,000, just that alone. Well, I think the if if the replacement of the building is roughly two hundred and twenty thousand, and then you add let's say forty thousand for the vault, you're still in there in that building value. The right. contents would be your uh, computers, printers, uh, well, the, the toilet paper supply. Yeah, <laughs> so your desk. <clears throat> Your desks and so forth would be would be anything that what isn't nailed down. So maybe that's pretty close. The vault wouldn't have to be replaced though, because that's like twelve inch thick concrete box with a metal door on it. Right, yeah. except for it might get damaged by the heat. Yeah, if it got yeah, damaged it by the heat. How it The stuff inside rows might not burn, but the vault itself might get damaged. Or the door. I think yeah. the door is a big ticket item on that vault. I wasn't here when that was priced out, but that's yeah. a sizable uh, cost when you're talking about the door. Yeah, we got it used. All right, so we want to, want to move on. Um, I did have a question about the contents of the town garage, only at 50,000. So if all the trucks and the cedar and the sander and all the gizmos and gadgets are in there and the place burns down, $50,000, what is that gonna cover? Well, the equipment, the um, vehicles and mobile equipment are covered under their own separate schedule. Oh, okay. I did see that, okay. And um, Alfred did say he thought that the garage value was good. I mean, he just didn't make an opinion on the town hall with, or the town office. Right. So $50,000 with all those hand tools and welders and all that stuff that would replace all that, Alfred? Uh, yes, I believe it would. I mean, there's really not a lot of contents in there. We don't have a lot of tools. We've got, we do have a welder and an air compressor um, and some hand tools, but really it's not that much. So, I mean, that's why I felt, felt comfortable with that number. Okay. And knowing that the vehicles are all, all covered under their own policy. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they were or not. I did see that other schedule, but I didn't know if that meant that they were covered if they were inside and the place burned down because that has happened <coughs> to town garages yeah well it, it has um but they are <coughs> covered those vehicles are covered no matter if they're in the building or out beside the road okay yeah all right so from this page it sounds to me like we agreed that we want to increase the building value of the town hall to 1.5 and that's the only change we're going to make Are we in agreement on that? Are you going to increase the contents of the town office? 
I don't think so, based on what Sandra just said. I mean, I think, I think it's, we have, to, what do we have? Desks? Yeah. And the computer, let's look at it like this. We figure we need to do a changeover every um, five years of our server and our computers. And that's roughly what, 18, $20,000? About 20,000. Yeah, so that's pro, and our desks are like all built-ins. It's not that we actually even have desks. There's the table and chairs. What else is in there? Yeah. The, the uh, copier, and that was $3,500. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really what your, my worry or my greatest concern was the town hall and if that should be increased. If, if you wanna go higher with the contents of the town office, that it, you know, that's up to you. I think it's good. Okay. But again, I'm not an expert, and uh, so no, I, I don't know that. It, I don't know that any of these are. are. We're kind of taking yeah. us. So, so what is on? There's another page, right? Oh, that's just a total page. Oh, okay. And that allows that just allows additional buildings. All right. So it sounds from what I've heard um, and if we're in agreement, um, we want to increase the value of the town hall to 1.5. Do we know what the deductible is on this? Higher deductibles lower your rate substantially. I don't know that there is a deductible. Tell you, I don't, they don't quote a deductible anywhere. Wow. Yeah, it's probably different for stuff like this than for us. Yeah, average. We're, we're part of a kind of a cooperative. We're, we're self-insured. And I don't ever remember seeing a deductible on anything. All right. I think, so there's, we're gonna... I think there's a deductible on the equipment. You mean like on like, checks? For like wind, yes, because I've, I've checked into replacing a windshield before and it's there's $500 deductible. Hmm. Okay, but that's maybe different. that's just glass. But that's different. That's the vehicle part. This isn't vehicles, this is buildings. We may want to look into a, um, a there's a separate policy addendum you can get for vehicles. This is on the, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. <clears throat> we may want to look into having seeing what it would cost to improve our glass coverage, broken windshields and, you know, uh, sand blasted windshields and stone chip windshields are common in Vermont. And those are usually good policies to improve upon. So on the very last page tucked in the back here, the standard, it says, the standard property casualty deductible is $1,000 for most members. All members continue to have a $2,500 deductible for employment practices liability, public officials liability, and law enforcement liability. So, so it's property 1, casualty, so it's $2,500 for basically em employment liability and then standard property casualty deductible is a thousand for most members it says so it's so it's about a thousand bucks mm-hmm all right so can we get a consensus that we want to increase this to 1.5 do we need to make a yeah, motion i'd move that we increase it to 1.5 the uh the town hall insurance policy and that we go with the guaranteed replacement cost policy type. Okay, I'd second that. So I can't see everybody. Wait a minute, I gotta move around. All right, so, all right, so Rose, do you wanna, are you ready to vote? Yep, aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. John? Aye. Cliff? Aye. 
Sharon? Aye. Aye, aye, okay. Next up in that packet of stuff. This is the uh, renewal application itself. Okay, so Sandra just has to sign that and right. send it in with the change. Now I did have a question on, um, I read all of this and I did have a question, but I don't find it now and I forgot to write it down. Um, we don't have sewer. Thank goodness. Don't have any covered bridges. Darn. Um, okay, under employment law, it says, has your municipality adopted a personnel policy or an employee manual handbook? Don't they just want yes or no answers? And you put in yeah, all they, they just want a yes or no. It's a what? That's it. So why is there a one there? It's a binary yeah. answer. A what? <laughs> He's being funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, that's not actually what I'm looking at. That there should that should be a a yes, actually. Yes. Yeah, but I that's not our answer. If you scroll to the top of that page. You're going to see that 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 was last year's answer, although last year's answer wasn't a one, it was a yes. And then 2021, we, we are to answer in that column. Oh, okay. So you have to fill in that column then? Yes. Okay. And then, um, Under cyber risk, didn't we do or do I know we talked about doing a cyber um, risk training? Did we do that? Do you remember that clip yeah. we talked about doing that? We hadn't had a, a formal training. Okay. We did. We talked about having um... RB. Mm -hmm. Right, we talked about it, it never came to fruition. Um, as I recall, um, they had given us some different options and even discussed the possibility of pooling with some other clients of theirs for some generalized training. Um, but uh, for whatever reasons, we decided not to go forward. I think the office staff felt that they were comfortable enough with the current circumstances and um, should they, they felt that they could voice a concern if they thought it would be necessary to schedule something like that. Okay. The other thing that we had discussed uh, with RB Tech is they suggested, should we decide we want to pursue this, uh, rather than come back to RB Tech, we might want to check with VLCT first because they provide this service and it would be less expensive. Okay, so Katie, Katie, can you that make a familiar. note? Can you make a note so we can make sure we follow up on this at some point? And it says, um, do you have written computer and information systems policy that govern employee usage of these devices? We do. It's in our personnel policy. Yep. So we could change that to a yes. Yeah. And it looks like that? the question about credit cards also got converted to a binary response. Yeah, and that should be in a, a yes, because we do have a policy. Where is that binary response? Yeah, that uh, is good. I don't know why that's a one. I can't, it's just a typo on their part. Okay. I think we got that covered. Okay. Hang on, the, the other, we didn't talk about it, but uh, the other blank that I'm seeing is the one about 
the website and copyright, copyright infringement? Is there a process to review content to ensure copyright infringement is avoided? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think we, we don't have a policy. Or a process. I mean, the answer oh, is yeah. just no. Yeah. We, well, we do review stuff to make before it goes on the website. It, I mean, we don't sound like we have a committee or anything. Is that what they mean? If, we're if, if we um, published a feed from some other information source onto the town website, um, then you would want to be able to review it and see, you know, okay, are, is it okay for us to publish this on our website without getting permission from the original author? That's really what they're trying to get to the point of here. We don't do anything. Anything we publish on the website has it's to ours. do with stuff that's been materials that's been developed by the town right i agree it's yeah. really I'm, I'm not saying it's big risk i mean i think we're really low risk but i mean sandra have we gotten away with just leaving that blank before uh that might be a new question mm. but um no we always answer it and if it's hang on let me look at the last um the last application and let's see what they have um we answered we actually answered that last time as a no so again I, you know i don't know how they pick up our prior answers i it's imperfect um but we answered it last time no because we don't have a process but and and back to what Cliff said, whatever's on our website is generally anything that we have produced, or it is a VLCT document or a VTrans document. Um, and those aren't copyrighted. Yeah, so we can just put no here. Yeah. I think I think they're asking if we have a process, and we don't. Not That's really. That's the answer. Isn't that? Isn't that what yeah. they're asking? Yeah, that is what they're asking, and that is the answer. Yep. And I, they'll let us. They'll let us know if they think that's a big problem. Okay. So what's next in this packet? Um, the other of these questions we need to review. There's. We don't have a. Yeah, we don't have a boiler. Okay. I'm I'm comfortable with Sandra answering the questions especially given that we just i mean it wasn't a very hard one but we just found our way to getting comfortable the answer is in fact no yeah. so um so that gives sandra comfort of knowing that when the answer is no you just say no yeah say it like it is, is this, okay what's next is this number for the estimate the number of volunteers is that um, hang on. I think I counted them and oh wait, nope, hold on. I know if you were gonna have you know every what? every single person on that list, I think it's about a hundred people or so. If you have to count every single volunteer, well, I think I, I just put seventeen again. I mean, it, how I don't know how many. What volunteers are there? They're the election volunteers. There's no? the there's all of the volunteers for every board, commission, and committee, right? We can put. I don't know what they want. That's up. To, I guess I would leave that up to you to ask them and fill it in. You know, what is it? 50? Is it 20? Is it a different number every year? We can, we can, uh, I can ask them 
how yeah, just ask them. or what they're looking for there. Yeah, just ask them and then fill it in. Ready to move on? Is that the end of it, Cliff? Other than the, the other one is just all the different trucks and all that stuff. So I would have left that to Alfred to look at. All right, the vehicle listings, estimated payroll. We can take a quick look at each of these. I did have a question about the workers' comp page. Well, that that page, I you, I need your estimate. If you feel comfortable with an estimate other than what VLCT has. All right. Right now, we're looking at the vehicles. Does anybody have any oh. issue with that, or can we move on to? Any questions on vehicles for Alfred? Nothing from me. Okay. So the workman's comp one, which is the next one up, I think. Um, yep. Why is the estimate for administration lower for FY21 than FY20? I, I, I cannot answer that question for them. Um, I was just curious, it seems odd. I think when they, when they audit us, if we are lower than, so for instance, in 2019, our um, audited payroll was 158.709 and um, hang on. And they don't necessarily, we, we won't get audited again until March, right? So they're just estimating based on what we're estimating, mm -hmm. but they don't have any real numbers for the 2020 current payroll because we don't have a 2020 number yet. It's not the end of the year. So mm -hmm. probably I kicked that up to 163 to cover the elections this year right that would that would push us over a little bit in terms of hourly rates but they're looking back at <laughs> at 2019 and making an estimate on on a real on a hard number that they've already audited and that is my best understanding of what they're doing okay so, I mean, my estimate for 2021 is 163,000. I, I just went and looked at all the administration through on, um, we don't have any um, elections, but figured, all right, let's just throw in a 2% increase on that. And I put it in at 163. If we are under that, we get a refund. If we are over that, they back bill us. So it's not, I mean, it's a fluid estimate. I mean, that's all it is, is an estimate. And then they uh, decide if we're lower or higher than what we've paid premiums on. So okay. what I did want to do is estimate the highway necessarily. I didn't know where you were in your negotiations. So it was the town hall that caused me that it, it was the town hall and the highway wage lines that I had most difficulty with. And I wanted to reach out to the board and have their your input before I send this in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was just curious as to how that came about. Looks like what BLCT is doing it uh, to just put the finer point on what San Sandra said. Uh, the 2021 VLCT estimate uh, it looks like that? it's a 1.5 percent increase over the 2019 numbers which is as sandra said their last audit their last hard number they had to work with yeah they sent us this great forecast for 21. yep okay is everybody good with this so we can be done with this because we've spent a lot of time on it 
Yes. So just to just to draw your attention one last place, the parks and recreation, that is going to have to go down from 40, you know, from that 44, from that $4,000 range to 2,500. Um, we don't have a swim program this year. Right. And perhaps not next year. We don't have an invasive species grant. But what we do have is our cemetery. Um, um, oh, heck, our Sexton is getting a $2,500 stipend. And that's what that reflects. Okay. All right. So I think we're done with this. Any Anybody have any? I can't see. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Sandra? What do you want to do with highway wages? I guess we is, is I what what was it 20, 2021? Yeah. Um I I don't think we have an answer. Why don't we may I suggest we we want to get this in. They've extended us our deadline. May I suggest we simply use their estimate? And if it's too low, they will, upon audit, they will back bill us. Yeah. If it's too high, we will get a refund. And um, and we can manage it in that way. Sounds like a good plan to me. Is that Everybody's shaking their head yes. OK. Yes. All right. Denise, anything? Yes. Uh, I was just going to suggest, oh, we lost Toby. Um, go, uh, before we before we go on and lose Toby and Alfred, I was going to say we should go back to the scheduling items because um, I don't think we said out loud what what you're trying as a new practice around getting agenda items to you by a date certain. Yeah. Well, um, Alfred's so, still Alfred's still here. Yeah. So I forgot what we said. Was it? was it thursday or friday or wednesday it's thursday and we and this was the practice we had before um it's used generally thursday by noon and alfred and toby are supposed to get items to me frequently i get an item at the last minute toby will send something out and i've got to hurry up and try to fit it in um so unless it's an urgent or an emergency, then it's going to not, it's going to get kicked to the next agenda, I, a next board meeting, unless I get it on Thursday by noon. Well, and it might get kicked to another board meeting anyway, if there's other right. more pressing issues, but yep. yes. So Thursday at noon. Yep. Alf, Alfred. Yeah. Alfred, you, are you still there? There he is. I am here. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I mean, that's the practice we used to have. A lot of times I would send out an email to everybody and say, do you have anything? And I would hear dead silence. Um, so sometimes I think maybe my email went out into outer space somewhere. Um, so I leave it up to everybody to get me their information by the noon on Thursday. Well, and that's so we can have a, a, a we can look at a draft agenda and see what right. it looks like. Does that right. make sense, Alfred? It's not just get it in or you miss it. It's get it in so the board can see, okay, what's on our plates? Do we have time right. for all this? Are we going to be able to have the right kind of discussion? And what- Right, and you have time to, to digest it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. I just want to say, I, I think it's a good idea. I think it's, you know, it's, um. It's a productive practice. And I, for the record, I just want to say that I don't usually generate agenda items. So if it looks like I'm not getting back to you, Denise, it's because I don't usually have items that I need to have put on the agenda. So yeah. I read it, I, um, you know, I review it, but I don't generate items. So yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate you taking the steps to do that. I think, I think it, it's helpful. Okay. Well, I, I think that's right. right. I think we we as a group tend not to be the ones generating items. They come from other places. Right. It's for us to have a chance to see what's on the what's on the lineup and say, hey, hang on, we've yeah. got five items that are a half hour each. That's not going to work. 
No, we yeah. have to be able to manage the items. That's why sometimes I'll push something to another meeting because it's just mm -hmm. going to take too long or we because we already have too much to do. Yep. Yep. Good idea. Right. So, yeah, also, so thank also, you. If I, if, if I could just add to that, also some things that I've noticed is sometimes when the curb cuts come in, yeah, they they hardly get to to us to look at or the select board to look at, and it's on the agenda to to discuss. So I think on the same token, the 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 curb cuts and some of the right away permits need a little more time to be looked at also before okay. they make it to the agenda. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe the curb cut needs to come to the agenda front through Alfred. Well, how does that work, Alfred? Do you get it at the same time? You get it at the same time I get it, right? When uh, yeah, it usually goes goes to the town clerk and then she distributes it out, right. out to, to us and we look at it. Uh, so I just can remember not too long ago, a few a few of them came in and it right. was like, wow, all of a sudden it's on the agenda and we haven't had time to even look at it. Right, and, now, so, and I mean, that it, it was... Just, I think some of those were people were in a hurry because it was summer and they wanted, wanted to get it in. Um, but well, I know, when, but it, it works the same way where everybody's in a hurry to get things done, but there's still a process that needs to be in place. Right. What I was going to finish my sentence with was, Alfred, if you get that and I get it, if you let me know that you've got it and when you're going to have a chance to look at it, that would help. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you. I just wanted, yeah, thank you for slowing down so Katie can capture with some clarity. So it's, we're on record, everyone can see it. Okay, is Toby back or can he be back? He hasn't rejoined. Um, I think someone would have to prompt him. Um, Cause I wanted to talk about this We've been asked to sign this letter from CBRPC. It's our standard letter. But I just wanted to know if he had anything to add to that. Is we he textable? John, can you text him? He's doing something. I'm going to try calling him. There you go. I'm calling his mobile if it's still current. Are you guys done with me? Oh, yes, Sandra. Thank you. Have a good Bye, evening. Sandra. Bye, Sandra. Have a good Bye. evening. Have a good Sandra. evening, everyone. Good night. You too. Good night. So what was that ping? It's probably just Sandra exiting. Oh, OK. Forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Eight zero two. That's Toby's voicemail. Three four nine. Do you nine, have another meeting tonight? Is not available. I have no idea. At the tone, please record your message. Recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Toby, we need you back in the select board meeting. Please call in. I'm going to text you. So while we're waiting for Toby, Cliff, while John, for John, what's the mobile number you have for Toby? Um, seven nine three four nine nine six. Uh, I think it's three seven one seven five nine two. I'll try texting him at that number. Okay. Cliff, can you talk and do that at the same time? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're waiting, so we don't lose time, any more time, um, how's the exterior painting of the town hall? It's going well. I stopped by on Friday and checked in with Grady and he um, said he's in the home stretch. He was working on the side of the building furthest from the main parking lot, opposite the main parking lot. The side that faces the main parking lot is completely done with the exception of the entryway closest to the road. He's kind of saving the doorways for last. Um, okay. But I would say he looked like he was a good half to two thirds done on the side that he was working on. Um, 
And as long as the weather continues to cooperate, he can make real good progress. So um, I'm hoping that by the time we open the doors for the election on the third, it, it will be complete. Sweet. Okay, nothing back from Toby? Not yet. Okay, do we have any IT update? Nothing to report for IT. Okay. Um, well, Alfred um, wanted to talk about your and the road crew's evaluation of UVM roads report. Toby had sent us something which didn't make a lot of sense to me and I had a bunch of questions that he didn't answer. Um, what did you and the crew come up with from that report? Uh, well, I, I, they certainly did a lot of work. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, some of it is useful. Um, but some of it, I it is not possible to do. I mean, uh, like they're having us start our roots at the Calis Elementary School is impossible because this the trucks need to have a full load of sand when they start and there's no facility there for the trucks to be in out of the cold mm -hmm. um, there's no sand pile there we've only got one bucket loader um, so I mean it, it certainly makes sense to try to cut down on the doubling up but if you look at our map that they put in there our town garage is at the corner of our town. Yeah. So, and those trucks need to need to be loaded while they're plowing. So generally we don't, we don't start sanding until we're on our way back. So we plow for plowing, we plow out and then we sand plow and sand back the other side. So there, when they talked about this dead, what was the term dead something? Dead heading. Dead heading. I know, so you, cutting, cutting the flowers off at the end of the season. I know. Um, right. So you plow out and then you sand coming back. So there isn't any deadheading. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm not saying there's no deadheading. There is some, but it, it can't be eliminated completely. Mm -hmm. you, you know, um, there are a lot of dead end roads that just go out and we turn around and come back. Uh, but there's also roads that we travel several times, like mm -hmm. Moscow Woods, for example. We come down Route 14. Moscow Woods is the closest route to get to the rest of our town. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of deadheading there because they're you know we're traveling the same the same road. Every truck goes over that road except for except for the one that does Lightning Ridge Road. And that is able to run down Route 14 and go up and up to Lightning Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there there is definitely a lot of a lot of roads that we travel several times, but there's no way around that given the location of our garage. So, for instance, when you do North Calis, that area, do you come in from Moscow Woods, or do you come in from over on there on Woodbury? Uh, Moscow Woods usually. That is usually the second portion of that route. So uh, he usually does Dugerbrook, Worcester Road, Robinson Cemetery, all of that with the first load. And then he'll go out and do uh, North Callis Road, which is, well, Foster Hill and Number 10 Pond. That's all the second part of that route because there's no buses on it. That's why right. we consider that to be the second route. Well, North Callis has bus, right? Right, and he and normally he'll do when he leaves the <laughs> shop. He goes up over Moscow Woods. He takes a right onto Rowell Road or Upper Road, excuse okay. me, Upper Road, yep. and then he'll do down North Callis Road. Um, actually, before he does that, he goes up to the fishing access and just just to keep the fishing access clean because the bus turns and stops there and then he goes down and catches uh Duger Brook Road okay. so North Callis is done you know that's part of the first 
portion of the root. Mm -hmm. So did you look at the plow root stuff? I mean, it, I, I had to get out my magnifying glass. Well, yeah, I asked, I asked, um, I asked Judy if she could blow that map up because we, yeah. none of us could see it. We just couldn't see it. Yeah. Um, so cool. it's blowed up and it's easier to see. And yes, I've studied it. I'm looking at it. Um, and I don't see a whole lot of changes to it. Yeah. Um, but it's the the biggest thing is that we there's just so many roads. There's 20 miles of road per route, and yeah. that's what takes us long so long. And we have to divide that up by the bus routes, and the bus route changes every year. It's something different every year, depending on where kids are coming to school and not coming to school and they oh, that's luckily true. get out of school and so that's a that's a, a change every year yeah and so that's why we our first portion of the route always changes because we have to cater to the buses to get them around at a certain time of day huh yeah alfred did did um Reading the report or looking at the maps, I, I would understand if you said there's, you know, there's, I'll, without being too worried, just there's, there's nothing particularly useful. How, but I'm wondering whether it inspires you to some, to some kind of creative thing that's not in there. That that or the report or the conversations with the the guy from I never remember where he was from, but uh, from our conversations a couple, I guess two years ago. Are you talking about Todd Eaton? He's he showed he Todd Eaton and Stu Johnson Sharon. If you remember, we're at. I know Todd and Stu were at most of our three or four public meetings, and I remember specifically Todd saying. If the rodeos were too long. Exactly. Yeah, I'm never going to remember his name, poor guy. Um, but yes, you know, right. and and well, there the were rodeos other... are too long. That's a, that's very true. I mean, it's six hours to get around. Yep. Well, I thought it was eight. No, it's six. Okay, six and six is too long. To six is too long. Right. Okay. Yeah, he suggested it shouldn't be longer than like around four hours. Yeah, so, and I think most towns around are are that that is there. That's what they are. It's four hours. That's what they shoot for. So uh, an answer I don't to know. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I said I don't. I'm. I don't know how we can shorten that up without adding another truck. Yeah. So an I mean, answer, can you can you answer Sharon's question? I think she said you know she proposed something that I thought was really valuable. by me being inspired to make changes i make changes every year to the to the bus routes and try to make it more feasible and more more economical i mean we change it all the time um you know i would i would love to have one of the big trucks do lightning ridge road but then you've got the fact that the the truck is driving down the blacktop down route 14 to get to to get to Lightning Ridge, and those big trucks have tire chains on them, and it you know it takes first of all it takes a lot longer, and it's wearing the wearing the chains. Mm -hmm. So that's why the little truck is four wheel drive. It it goes down Route 14 a lot faster, and it takes care of Lightning Ridge. So that's one thing that I've definitely thought of that you know would certainly make it more feasible and and easier. Um, for me to take care of the blacktops, if I'm not running back to back to Lightning Ridge, I mean Lightning Ridge is a very heavily traffic road with the school there. So yes, I'm constantly thinking about ways of of making it easier and faster. I mean, but like I said, the challenge is is that our town garage is at the very corner of the town. Yeah, it's been there for a long so, time. Yes, it has. But also the demand is way up too. 
You know what I mean? When I first started for the town, it wasn't like this. We didn't, you know what I mean? People didn't complain about whether there was an inch of snow. A lot of times they waited until the snow was done. And then they went and plowed. Mm -hmm. We can't do that now. We just, we cannot do that now. So everything has changed. Everything has changed. And I'm, I'm certainly looking in the ways to, to change our abilities, but I think we need another truck. I really think we need another truck. And sometimes last, not so much last year, but the year before we did have a fifth truck on because we were using Ed and that helped out a lot because I would put that third truck or that fifth truck onto Jack Hill, Peak and Brook, all of North Callis, uh, Ballantyne Road, and that cut it down. That certainly cut it way down. But we can't we can't run five trucks every day because it's so not when, first of all it's not in the budget, and it's we don't always have that fifth truck. Meaning that one of the other trucks is broke down or something. Right. Right. Or, well, usually when I used him, it was a, it was a big storm or yeah. it was, you know, it was something that honored having the fifth person in, but and I can't, you know, without, but changing the budget and changing plans, I can't, I can't have a fifth guy for every storm. But Ed, Ed we're paying him just an hourly flat hourly rate um, without any benefits and stuff. So if he's plowing, isn't that going to cut down on the amount of overtime the other guys get, which would offset the budget? Yes. Yes, it, it definitely does. Cause you're paying him regular time or regular wage. Um, mm-hmm. and I got to keep him under 32 hours. Right. So, so yes, that certainly cuts down because the roots get done faster and you know, we don't have to be out there as long. So why are you saying you can't do that now? Is he not available? Uh, he is available, but I just can't, unless unless you direct me to use him more often during the winter and have that fifth guy, because typically I call I call myself and three other people are out there. Yeah. Unless it's a unless it's a large snow event, and and that's it. That there's four mm-hmm. trucks rolling. <laughs> There were some times that we used the fifth truck and it very much helped. I mean, it helped us get it done a lot quicker. Yeah. Sharon, you had a question? Oh, okay. I'm choking on my water. Alfred, you said that we used to have the fifth guy and then you said you were waiting for the select board to authorize it. And is there something that we missed in the past year or two where we have a conversation with you you what's yeah. changed well, no, it, what's it, changed no, if you feel been, like that's not authorized i feel like it's not authorized it's i mean i use you know we've got a four man crew and the spare guy ed which is our spare guy is there for if somebody's out sick i guess i don't remember us having a conversation to sharon's point we never said anything about ed the only thing we've ever said is what can we do to keep down overtime? Right. And, I'm not saying we, you told me not to. I'm just saying the protocol is there's four guys on, on a given day. It's right. A four you, man crew. But you use them in the summertime for reading the roads and stuff, and we don't say anything. So what, what's different about plowing in the winter and summertime stuff? Uh, there is nothing different about it. It's just if you want me to have five guys, I'll use I'll use him. I, I'm just I'm trying to follow the basis of 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 the crew size. Mm-hmm. Alfred, I mean, I think- I, when we hired Ed, we hired Ed as a spare. So a spare means it's somebody to fill in when somebody is sick, or when I'm short one guy. And so that's what I've been trying to follow. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I'm not, you I'm not saying them. you guys have said anything against it. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just trying to follow the, the normal protocols that we've always used. And it's always but, been a four man crew. But how did, how do you square? I'm just, I'm feeling, I'm not under, it's feeling like a disconnect to me because there's something I don't understand between you got a four man queue and you're trying to f- crew and you're trying to follow that protocol. And we used to be able to blah, blah, blah. 
I'm, so what, so right, how did, not, where's, where's that, um, what's the link between, you used to be able to send Ed Rowell out to do things that were helpful and now you don't, I, I'm just missing that link. Right, and so am I, and so am I because we use, you do use Ed in the summertime as a, as a fifth person to help with grading and stuff. I know you said that was really helpful because you could grade more. So what, help me understand right. what's the difference. Well, what's different is now we have a mower that you guys, you want me to put a guy onto and, and it ends up taking all summer long. So that takes one guy from the regular crew and where we never had a mower before. We've never, you know, we've always hired that done. This year we've had a, a mower, so I've I've had to put I've used Ed a little bit more for that, mm -hmm. um, and I I, I just I, there's there's no, I'm not saying you guys have told me anything different. It's just I'm trying to follow the protocol. If I am told to use Ed more and more, I'll be happy to use him. I don't think and there's I, any. I don't know what protocol you're talking about. We have a four-man crew. Right, I know we that. We have four trucks on the road and a spare in case one breaks down. That's what it's always been. Yeah. Maybe I need to go on a limb here myself and just decide to hire Ed more, more often and have a five-man crew. So, Alfred, the in-between is – can I – John, do you mind if I finish? <clears throat> I think there's – I hear you saying you need to decide – or the, the select board hasn't told you to. And, the, and the, the opportunity is in between, in clear communication, where you say to yourself, this is how it, you know I'm imagining it, it all goes down. Like Alfred says, you know, um, I feel like we need to do blah, blah, blah. And I, and you, Alfred, bring us a proposal that says, board, heading into the winter, want things to go smoother than last year. I propose that we do higher, higher ed for this. You know, what I don't, I can't make this up. Um, that's, I can't, I wish I could keep talking in a way that actually made sense. But when you don't do that, you're owning a decision that you haven't brought to us for discussion. And then you, and then you pour, and then you get stuck with us saying, how come, why? And we haven't had the conversation. We might say no. I mean, that's the hard part for you. It's like you might bring something forward and we would say no, but you wouldn't have to own that decision all by yourself. So, John, you right. want to say something? Yeah, just a point of clarification. I, I thought we added money to our budget this year. Maybe we removed it in our cost cutting efforts. Did we? Uh, I thought we put money in the budget to cover. Uh, a temporary to run the mower so we wouldn't burden the highway crew that's my first question um did that where did what line item did it go in because mowing under mowing i thought um and then uh, the no second your budget question, for uh, mowing is ten thousand dollars that you, you kept that the same as last year because we were hiring it done and we wanted it mowed twice so that is is ten thousand dollars Right, so there you go. So there's the money to hire a temporary. We ha now have a tractor, so there's ten thousand dollars at ten bucks an hour. Right, and That's I just said I'm saying hours. that I have been hiring him. I have been hiring him this summer. Oh, okay. Ed. So, so, so my other question slash statement <laughs> is based on the conversation I had with Ed Rowell last year, right around this time of the year. He said he's limited in terms of the total number of hours per year that he can work um, or he will impact his social security benefit. And right. so my understanding was we, we were going to hire somebody with some minimal tractor experience, i.e. a kid. I know we had some back and forth on that, Alfred, but some maybe yep. a farm kid. Um, and there yep. are still some. And uh, for doing the mowing, so we wouldn't impact the existing road crew. And, and, and the reason I suggested that was in, in very large part 
so that we could save Ed for the winter. So we didn't run out his hours um, that he could work. Um, right. He's not. He's going to hit that limit, and he's not going to work anymore. He said. Right. Well, so that that actually has changed. From everybody. That has actually changed since last year. He he is got he is allowed more more the ability to work more hours. Because he's older. Because yeah, because he's older, or they change yeah. something, some law or something. So he is able to work oh, more, really? like a lot more, like a lot uh, more I hours. I'm not sure of the the numbers. It, it's a dollar amount, is what it is. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I remember is seeing what he, is what he can earn. And also this summer, there was a few times that I couldn't get him because he had doctor's appointments and he had, you know, he just had uh, surgery on his eyes so he could see better. And, you know, there was some days that I called him and he couldn't come in. I mean, that's, yeah. I, I, you know, I can't beg him to work. I can't force him to work if he's got health issues. Yeah, no, we're not um, suggesting that. No, I know. I'm not either. I'm yeah. just saying that there's been a couple of times this summer that I couldn't get him because he had things, other things to do. And, and, you know, I have actually tried a couple of, I tried to get a couple other people to run the mower and mm -hmm. they think about it. And then they change their mind. Billy Gray was one of them. He offered to mow on his off time. Um, Adam, Adam, Adam Lane uh, offered, he lives in town. He wanted to, to do some mowing and, it just he they have full time jobs, so they you know what I mean? They weren't yes. all and it just didn't materialize. So anyway, back to the winter. I think that's what we're talking about is the winter time. Um I think if if I feel comfortable with with having Ed on and for some of these storms then I'll have five guys, five trucks going, and then we can make progress. We can get it done a lot faster. That, and it will save on overtime with the rest of the crew and give everybody a much more, a much bigger break, I would hope. Right, right. That's I mean, there's a lot of times in the wintertime where I would just as soon not go out again and put salt on. I can call Ed. He's right there. You know what gotcha. I mean? In the evening where when I've already worked – eight, 10, 12 hours, I don't want to go back again. I can call Ed. And so then you're paying Ed regular wage and not paying me time and a half. Yep. I've done, I've driven a truck cool. enough. I don't, I'm, I'm okay without driving a truck. You know, <laughs> okay. if I can pass that on to Ed, I'd be happy to, or somebody else for I'll that matter. If we find somebody else, go ahead. I'm just looking for your opinion on why, you think it is? I mean, you said that we have an increased uh, demand for your services during during and after snowstorms that we need to plow out more and more, um, and that it's somewhat complaint driven. I, I'm just curious, what do you think that is? Given that pretty much every car that goes by on my road is all wheel drive. I, we used to have rear wheel drive cars, and people didn't complain as much as they do now with their four wheel drive cars. What do you think that is? Well, I think it's a lot of it is people don't prepare themselves like they used to. People used to have a cow out back that they could get their gallon of milk from. Now everybody's driving to the store to get a gallon of milk or a pack of cigarettes. They're not planning themselves far enough ahead. And I, I have to disagree with, with the majority of, of the vehicles are all wheel drive. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but there's a lot of front wheel drives that have 16 inch tire, 15 inch tires on them. They have no ground clearance. There's a lot of them. And, and half of the time it's until January before anybody gets their winter tires on. So that's some of the demand and people now, now people's homes have two, two vehicles driving where 20 years ago when I started this job, there was one family car. There's a lot of things that have changed. <clears throat> so, I mean, I mean, I'm not blaming anybody. It's just a fact of life. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And the storms, let's get into the storms. Look at the weather we have now. You go from, from 10 below to, to 30 degrees. 
And most of these storms are hover right around that 30 degree mark where it's the most, the most slippery snow or ice or whatever is falling from the sky at that time. Everything is warmer now. Whereas years ago, it was nothing to have three weeks of 20 degree, 20 below weather. We don't have that anymore. We don't. When it's cold, traction is good. When it's warm, traction is terrible. And we have become a lot warmer. It's, so it's not, it's not just because the road crew is lazy and they're not out there on time or they're not whatever it is. It, everything has changed. Okay. So All back to... Points. Yeah, they're good points. And they're also there's more people in Calus now. There's a lot more people in Calus. That's right. Our, our population is, what, 1,600 now? Yep. And it's, it's older. Our population as a percentage is, is increasingly aging. So anyways, back to the UVM roads report. I think this has been a really good discussion. I appreciate it. Um, so when you can look at those maps in a form that they're actually bigger, maybe something will jump out to you that you could try. Yes. That's, that's Denise, where my head is, is I want, Alfred, I, I want to understand, I want to hear from you about, okay, if I've got this tool in my toolbox and this tool in my toolbox, then I'm going to, I am going to redesign the roots like this. I want, I hear you saying, and I've heard Toby say it too, we make adjustments all the time. We make adjustments all the time, but I want to hear, to me, uh, it, there's some system you have. And if you're, if you're making a thoughtful change to the system, I would like to hear about it. Yeah, you know, I would too. I, I'm, I'm taking this route from a six hour route guys, um, where, and, and maybe they're not always the same, let's say, 80% of their routes are six hour routes. And I'm taking us down this year to 50% of the routes are, are six hours and the others are gonna be whatever. And I've got a plan to roll out some shorter routes next, like something that gives us a way to track it. I feel like we're always just waiting around to hear what you have to say. And I don't have a sense of how it's systematically evolving. So if you, so to Sharon's point, so if you use Edmore, can you cut down on the amount of hours it takes to do a route? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that would be single you route. Add another truck, you add another truck, then it definitely will cut it down. But you have It'll, offered, you have a map of the routes, right? I'm staring at it right now, yes. So can you, can you redraw it and come back and say, used to look like this, now this is what the routes are? And a guy can do two routes, the nine hours, have a lunch break in between, whatever. And then we're, you know, and this is how, this is how that, those two tools, knowing I can use the fifth truck, knowing I can hire a fifth guy, this is how I'm going to use those tools. And this is what it will need for the town in a quantifiable way. And that, yeah. if, it's a, if it's a quantifiable way, then when you or us get calls from people, then we have something concrete that we can say. Exactly. So, so we're not just kind of trying to say, well, you know, the guys work hard and they're 10 hour routes and blah, blah, blah. The weather, the weather is worse. Yeah, I mean, all of all right. which is true. The weather is worse. I agree with you on that. I mean, just look at the storms we've had last week, those rainstorms, right. you know, I mean, those that there was one that was pretty ferocious. Um, but if we all are on the same page and we have information from you, then we can support you. And not just talking points, data. Yeah, that's what people want. Okay. Yeah. Well, There's I can rewrite the, the map. Okay, then bring it back when? to us. That'd be when? Great. Yes, when are you going to come back with a new map? <laughs> uh, well, I, I'll work on it. I. I don't want to oh, commit no, to no, a no. certain time. There's no, a lot. Gotta, There's no. no uh, I still, I'm putting trucks together right now. This week, I'm we, going to be putting trucks together. So I'm not going to have a lot of seat time. So what? November say, 9th? Can we say November 9th for you to come back to us? That gives you almost a month. Yes, that's okay. fair. All right. Katie, put that right down. Thank you. All right. Good. We made progress. I feel good that we made some progress. So um, County Road. 
I was looking at the speed limit guidebook or whatever this thing is called. And Rose, you were correct. I had the wrong one. But I don't know how much has changed from 2012 to 2016. Mm -hmm. But what I did find, which I didn't know before, was on page 8, 16 of the 2012 version. It says, um, and John, I think, I hope you're still there. Um, we can send a letter. I am. Okay. We have, um, we do have some speed reports, which CVRPC sent to us, which I, Katie posted. Um, they can do another one. Mm -hmm. And then we send a letter to this traffic committee coordinator, mm -hmm. state of Vermont. And it should also go to the district transportation administrator. So I would propose that we ask CVRPC to do another traffic study, the one I think that's in the folder is from 2014. Um, it sounded like from what Ashley said, they could do another study if we let them know soon. Mm -hmm. And then depending on what that study comes back with, we ask them to go over that data with us because that data is, makes my head explode. Mm -hmm. um, and ask CVRPC to come to us and then talk about sending this letter that they talk about in this speed limit book. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And would they set up one of those um, counter things or speed? Um, I think that's what they do. Yeah, but over by this guy's house, Chris Lyford on the county road. Where is, that, on the, where is that Rose on the county road? Um, just I don't before know. you get to the town line. Just before yeah. you get to is the it, town. You mean between going out the of the town it? line in Martin Road? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. And I, I think um, part of his problem is um, he. I think he probably should move his driveway. I. Um, he has an old driveway that was grandfathered that's been on that property for years and years and years. And, um, you know, he just has very poor sight distance. And so he said, you know, there's so many times that he's almost gotten smashed there. Um, can, we, can we do that? Can we ask somebody to move their driveway? Well, I think first we'll get the speed data yeah, yeah. Um, and we'll see how fast people really are going. And, you know, I just think that sometimes when people are standing still and a car goes by, you you could think, oh my God, they're going so fast, but you know they could be yeah. doing forty five, you know. So, um, but and, I think first if we get the data, yeah, and um, and and then we'll have something quantifiable, um, and then that I think that that could be an option because he did say that to me when he was on the phone. Yeah, he called me a couple of weeks ago, and also in that speed limit book, it said that we can get. And we could call, we could get um, the report from the sheriff to say how many tickets at what speed they might have given out. Mm -hmm. And also we can ask the Vermont State Police for crash reports. Mm -hmm. So I think that would give us more information to go by. Right, right. Yeah, because it, in this um, manual, and I was reading it today too, I mean, of course, we have to listen to our constituents, but you don't want to just lower the speed limit because one person complained. Right. Um, yeah, I saw. I saw that so, same thing, Rose. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, does that sound like a plan that we'll get CVRPC to come and do that? We can get a VSP to give us a report and get the sheriff to give us a report, and then we'll have some solid information to decide whether we want to go to this traffic committee, state of Vermont traffic committee thing. Does yeah, I think sense? that's a good idea. Okay, very good. Are you ready to move on to other agenda items at this point? Well, just, just quickly before we do, Denise, um, yeah. it's, I don't know if you, once a speed limit is set, you don't need to continually do 
perform traffic studies to maintain that speed limit, I'm guessing, right? You only need to have, you have to have the traffic studies if you want to change the speed limit. Yeah. And the reason I asked that is because I, I really would want to understand if we do get pushback from AOT, what the, the colorable difference is between the county road in East Montpelier um, and, and Cowlitz. Because I mean, it's got pretty much the same density of houses and intersections and curves and hills. So um, I think if we get pushback, that's going to be my first question to AOT. I've never okay. understood that. Yeah, I agree with you, John. I've never yeah. understood yeah. why it's different in it, East Montpelier than it is in Callis. Callis, the county road was much less populated. Uh, I know when I first moved here in the 80s. So um, it, there are many, many more houses. I mean, well, all the houses true. on that uh, just south of the intersection of Bliss Pond Road that was Stanley Morse's uh, pasture. Yeah. Um, all that and the roses gravel pit is mm -hmm. that's all new stuff and 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 you know all through there it's between maple corner and there it's really been built up so mm -hmm. it might have had mm -hmm. something to do with that less driveway uh curb cuts and all that yeah well i think we have a plan um and then like you said if we if we ask to have it reduced and they say no then we want to know why so we have good information so when we get people saying you need to reduce the speed limit they're going too fast we have solid information to fall back on mm -hmm. okay alfred do you have anything else for us uh no i don't think so okay i like i said i'm going to start putting trucks together for for winter it's that time of year yeah i heard we might get some snow the end of the week in the higher elevations does that mean bain Kamali road uh, you are pretty high up there, yes, but I, I, I don't expect it'll stick just yet. But we got to get ready so. just in case. Yeah, <laughs> right. Better to be prepared, right? That's correct. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, all right. All right. Good night. Right. Thank you. Have good, uh, yeah. Have a good night. You too. Thank you, Alfred. Bye, Alfred. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Alfred. Hey guys, it's only 20 minutes and nine and we don't have that much more to do. We might actually be able to get done by nine, nine or a little after because we are meeting, don't forget, on Monday night for personnel stuff. So we don't necessarily have to do anything personnel executive session to make us get done at 10 or 11 o'clock tonight unless you want to. Can I um, jump in and let you your voice have a 30 second break, Denise. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, the rest of you guys authorized me to sign that curb cut for GAR Road on behalf of the board. We did it two weeks ago. I thought you guys did that when you. We approved it, but I have to fill yeah, it out sure. and we all have to sign it. And we didn't do the part where I'm authorized to sign for every sign for the board. Right. <laughs> Do you they need, need a motion to, uh, for that? They needed to amend it. So I'm assuming by now we've received the amended application with the correct names on it. I haven't seen it. That's a good question. I was just going to put that That's in as waiting. a condition. No, we approved it. Yeah. On the uh, right, but that was a condition of right, to me. That would mean we would go ahead and s sign it and then look for that because they wanted to have it. I can circle back on that. But if I get all the pieces. Yeah, I would be. I well, would that's, be. that's fine with me. Um, I think yeah. I just want to make sure you put all names on it because we had that blowback problem when chairs get blamed for everything. So. So so I'll sign on behalf of the select board, John, Denise, Rose, Not me. Cliff, Denise, Wheeler recused. Right, and that's what I did on one of the last things that I did, and I I printed the page of the minutes that authorized the signature with the motion to approve it. I attached it to the curb cut, that's so it's very idea. clear. And then it, the copy would go in the file at the town office with that page of the minutes attached to it. 
That's another option. Good idea. So I would move that we authorize Vice Chair Sharon Wynn Fannin to sign on behalf of the board, acknowledging that Denise has recused herself uh, on the GAR curb cut application once it's received uh, in its final amended form, acknowledging I'll, that it's been approved. I'll second that. Oh, do, I guess need, I, I guess I'm sharing here. <laughs> yeah, you need to do a roll call. Yes. Uh, are you, is everyone ready to vote? Yeah. Uh, Rose. Aye. John. Yes. Cliff. Aye. And I'm I. Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Thank, Aye. thank you, Denise. Yeah, sure. Thank you for taking care of that. Um. All right. We don't have to do appointments tonight but i took what rose did thank you rose and put together a sheet that pretty much just tells us who who needs to be reappointed we do have a new person i know his name but i can't place where he lives peter Lividides um has requested to be on the trails committee and i told tom blatchley that i would ask all of you whether we wanted to meet him via Zoom before we put him on the trails committee. It's, sometimes it's nice to put the name with the face. Um, what's your pleasure? Would you like to have him come on next meeting on the 26th for a couple minutes to say hello? Have they met him? Yes. They Is have. Is it my internet that's or Denise's? I'm, I didn't get but pieces of Denise's. Peter Lividides. Peter Lividides has asked to be on the Trails Committee. Um, Tom Blatchley has talked to him. The Trails Committee is in agreement that they would like to have him on. Um, sometimes we've said we want to meet people. So I'm asking whether we want to have him come to our meeting on the 26th to meet him and officially appoint him. And maybe we can do these other appointments at the same time. Why don't you appointments? Yeah, yeah. Tell him we're going to appoint him. That it seems like we're going to appoint him at the next meeting. And if he could be there in person, just so we can say hi, hi. and thank you. Okay, I will do that. So that's all really about appointments. Um, John, did you do you were gonna do a letter to the solid waste management board, or did that other letter they sent? take care of the issue that we had. I think John's frozen. He looks frozen. Oh, there you are. You weren't frozen? No, my house is plenty warm. I'm not frozen at all. It's... Oh, okay. So this, this solid waste management district, that document that they sent around and then you were gonna write a letter. Where are we with all that? They're having their I, board I will still get them a letter. They already <coughs> oh. had that board meeting right on the heels of ours. So um, you know what I'll happened? get one out to you guys in draft. Oh, they, there was nothing on the agenda regarding our discussion with Kathleen Gent. Now, whether she brought it up under general business, I don't know. Um, how, do we, how do we check their I minutes? Think, I don't expect to see them be responsive. Quite frankly, Denise, yeah, I think I've been pretty clear in my dis mm -hmm. disappointment in them. They are intentionally uh, <coughs> avoiding discussing this, as are all all the districts except for the Northeast Kingdom district. Um, I think it's very unfortunate. It's, I find okay, it very so upsetting, and you know, I, you know, frankly, as one member of this board, my opinion, um, <clears throat> I, I think it, it's it's a healthy thing like we did some years ago, to, to reevaluate our membership in this district every so often. Our last time we reevaluated it, I wanna say seven or eight years ago, it resulted in major repercussions there and actually a significant reduction in staffing and a budget reconfiguration uh, led by Bill Powell, chair of the budget committee, and our dues actually went down. Um, and they became somewhat more responsive as a result. 
there was a major reorganization, was, I'll say. Yeah. And it was all born of our pushing back and asking hard questions. Um, we could, and I think we should at some point after this letter down the road, we should be um, re, re, taking a second look at our membership and, and inviting them in to explain to us, uh, uh, answer a number of questions, not only on this matter, but just what are we getting for our membership and, and our, our, the cost of our membership? There are alternatives. There's a, uh, there, a number of towns have peeled off of the central of Montsalways district. Cabot left and I joined the Northeast Kingdom district. Uh, Northfield's left and there's this other Valley Alliance or something. I don't know the name exactly, but um, they've been able to reduce their costs and get equivalent or better service. So hmm. um, just FYI. And we should, they be, should be advocates for us. And if they're well, not they willing. So should we be getting a refund somehow for them saying that they, for all this glass that supposedly got recycled and didn't? Well, it's not, well, that, that can be the first thing we could ask of. We could run a calculation and ask for CSWD to refund the cost of all that or some portion of that. All the way back as far as back as we can figure i'm still working on those numbers trying to figure i got a records request in to the attorney general's office who by the way refuses to respond to my emails well, they have to read they have to answer you a and r um yeah they're violating the law i sent a, re a second records request um a and r has responded they're they're looking for records now um i i'm trying to prepare for this hearing so um yeah. But just just so you know, there's a there's a lot that should be happening that's not happening. Um, there's a lot a lot more to to do. So, um, but I I think at some point we're going to get to a point where we just need to check in uh, with the district uh, executive director, maybe an executive committee, maybe the chair of the board, and certainly Bill Powell to find out what's going on just generally. What are they doing for us? What services are they providing as part of to us as part of our membership? Um, I like I like that idea, John. Yeah. Who is this I think Brennan? It's a healthy thing to do. Who's this Brennan person? Brenna. Is he the chair of the board? I don't I know. I don't know. I, I couldn't decide if it was a male or a female based on the first name. Brenna? Yeah. Brenna? That's a woman. Uh, I don't know. That's a woman? Well, it it often is. First time I've ever heard Brenna. I've heard Brenda. <laughs> I've heard Brenda and I've heard Brandon, but not Brenna. Brenna's oh, you talking like... about the person who sent that that email? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He had some or she had some title after the name, but I wasn't sure what they did. I don't know. Okay. Well, you'll Might keep us an administrative person. So, John, I'm going to just keep a, a short item on the agenda going forward for you to give us updates on this. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. I, I, you will see a draft letter at some point. And uh, while while you got me on the at the mic, um, I have sent an email follow up to uh, Virginia Heavy Equipment uh, today, asking for information one. What's the status of our chipper? And two, oh. what's what's the what what have you know what are they going to do about that invoice we received of nine hundred plus dollars uh, related to the evaluation that they directed me to have performed on the chipper before they would take it back? So they uh, you know they need to get back to me on that. I, I expect they will. Okay, good. All right, thank you for the updates. Um, I just thought we'd give you a little update on, you know, Judy and Barbara have been hustling and bustling, getting everything set up for election day, which is going to be at the town hall. There's a group of three or four of us that are going to be at the town hall, socially distanced, wearing masks, starting at 
five o'clock to count the ballots, look for voter intent, you know, the ones that uh, don't necessarily go through the um, tabulator the right way, those kinds of things. So I, we did, I, when we did it after the primary, um, it was just myself and Olivia Gay that did this job and we were done in an hour. So I'm guessing that with three or four of us, I'm, th I'm thinking it'll be probably pretty heavy turnout. There's a lot of processing going on with collecting the early ballots. So they every day they go and get them and out of the drop box and put them in the vault and start checking names off of the um, database, you know, based on the envelopes. And what else? So anyway, so I just wanted to give you an update. There is a little bit of concern. I don't think we have to worry so much about it in Vermont. There is a bit of a concern that um, they raise that they wonder if they will have any people there that will be trying to influence voters or being a little aggressive maybe with their behavior. I talked to Judy and suggested that she get Wilson to come for part of the day. Maybe there's a couple other people that could show up to just kind of be sitting in the background in a chair, just kind of observing so that if it's anybody gonna, gets aggressive or hostile. It's going to be a town hall? Yep. So too bad we're not at school where Chris Tuller is there. Well, he was actually one of the people we thought about asking. Chris Tuller, um, Dan Singleton, I was thinking. John Brabant. Yeah, John Brabant would be great. So just go ahead. Yeah, Toby, Toby Talbot. Toby somehow doesn't look very. So we're we are worried about these quote unquote poll monitors that Trump and Bill Barr have indicated are necessary to, to protect our democracy. No, they're worried is, about is that. The, what we're no, we're, they're worried more about, and I want to be careful what I'm saying because we're being recorded. Um, these are people that might be trying to stop people from voting or be hostile if they find out who somebody is voting for or just be a little intimidating. I don't think we're gonna have a lot of that in right. Vermont, especially not in Callis, but just for a comfort level, and I checked back in, but didn't get an answer to see if they decided that they wanted to have some people there. So I'm just giving you an update. I think, I mean, and that, that can go either way politically, right? Yes, it can. Um, so, so I agree. I don't, and I don't think it's a political comment. It's a highly charged election. Yes. And just for people to feel safe, to have a few extra folks around. Yeah. I don't think it hurts. So, anyway, so I think we just wanted to give you that update. Cliff, did you want to add anything to that? No, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, I think we've got some good names in the hat and um, we'll see what uh, Judy and Barbara decide they're comfortable with. Yeah. If, any, if, if anything else, it means there would be somebody available to do sandwich runs. Yes, yeah, if nothing else, right, right. Okay, so that was just a little update. And then the last thing that I had was, um, and I just put together a quick supposal of how we might look at um, divvying up the workload of looking at our, I looked at the website and there's several different versions of, for instance, the personnel policy, which we don't wanna get rid of, but we could create an archive section to put ones that have been updated sometimes you want to look back at the old stuff and I think we should from my perspective looking at that it would be good to put a tab for ordinances and then a tab for policies so it's easier to find stuff because somehow what was it a couple of weeks ago I couldn't find the emergency management page I wanted to look at something and I couldn't find it I looked in the list so anyways Long and short of that is it was under the select board. So I asked that it have its own its own place on the left-hand side because I think it's an important enough 
document and an important enough issue that it should have its own tab on the left hand side of the website page. So that's been done. So anyways, we don't have to do any of this tonight, but I just wanted to put something together for you to think about. And it's in the folder. Um, I think I, yes. I mean, yes. And, and building from that, um, and I imagine this is what's in your head too, Denise, the way that you organize what you sent to us. And I think you even said it in, in maybe in the lead in, but um, we should, we've had, we've had in the past several months circumstance where people um, were surprised that we had such a policy. And, and honestly, sometimes I've been surprised we have such a policy and they're really helpful, right? Our policies. Mm -hmm. So keeping them current, both keeping them current, both so that they stay current and also so that we keep them in front of ourselves and the townspeople um, having a regular every, if we review our, if we had all of our policies, you know, not all at once, but reviewed every three years, then there wouldn't, there would be no opportunity for the select board to have five people who don't know there's a policy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and I got your message about, you know, for instance, Gar, Gar Road ordinance is not there. I right. do have an old, I do have an old book of policies before we had a website, believe it or not. Um, that I'll get go, those out there. Yeah. So I'll get that out and look at it and see and ask maybe Judy or Barbara to look through the book at the town office. Right. Right. So no, I, I love this. I love this project. It makes me feel really good about getting the house cleaned up. Yeah. And I just threw in names. I had, it was not a lot of rhyme or reason to it. Some of it, um, some of it was like with Cliff to do a look at the Wi Fi policy and to look at the website policy, those kinds of things. Um, and like I said, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. I just kind of threw names in there. So maybe you could take a look at it between now and next meeting and we could start to have a plan to work on some of this stuff if you're game for it. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I think it's great. And then once, we, once we've looked at it and we've said, um, yes, love it just the way it is, then we'll update it as being reviewed in November, 2020, right? So, um, Katie, that's on the list of things to do. I will try to take a look at that book that I have um, and see if there's any that are missing. And I also want to think about Curtis Pond, um, whether having the Curtis Pond stuff on this page makes sense or if it should kind of have its own tab. So you don't I have think, to, and don't have yeah, to, yeah. Think about it. And then speaking, if we're all done with this, unless anybody has any comments, the link to the historic preservation ordinance doesn't work. Um, Is there still one? Well, the 2002 one doesn't work, but it should be archived anyways. Okay, but like because there's like, a new one. Right, like for instance, the HPC ordinance seems like the HPC should look at it and get back to us. Not that we shouldn't look at it as well, the but it would be good to hear from them. For, the 2002 link worked for me. Really? Huh. Yeah. Okay, I did didn't work on it. Denise, I would like it if they could be alphabetical. Yeah, that would help. Good point. Because they are kind of all over the place. It's hard to, yeah. I find it, hard to find what I'm looking for because there's so much there. Yeah. So if we had ordinances separate, Curtis Pond separate, policies separate, alphabetical, it would help, right? Yep. Okay. And had all had them all there. Right. Okay. Well that's just good. I just wanted to put it on your radar and get you guys feedback on the idea. And maybe and maybe get rid of the word callous, like K 
callous website policy? Like right. we know this is callous. Oh, we do. <laughs> that's really oh, that's the, even the person. That's the personnel a really good policy. idea, Cal. That's a really good idea, Rose. Yep, the two thousand two thing works for me too. That's huh. that is weird. Okay, so the last I thing. Am not weird. Um, do you want to approve the minutes from October fifth? Since it's a little early tonight, I don't know how late. I, oh yeah, those I I looked at them. There's nothing Denise, really much. No, that was last week, guys. We met. We went into executive yeah. session. Yeah. We might have approved some minutes. I make a motion we approve as presented. I'll second that. Anybody else have an issue with the October five minutes? All right, Rose, you ready to vote? Yes, aye. Okay, I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. John? Yes. Karen? Yes. Okay, so one last thing, unless you're dying to go into executive session tonight, is we're meeting, last I knew we were still meeting with, on the 14th at Maple Corner Community Center at 4 p.m. Um, I'm going to order sandwiches tomorrow. I have not seen or heard anything more than what I sent CC to all of you on and Cindy got back to us. I have not heard one single other thing on that. So I'm assuming we're still a go. Maybe uh, you'll, maybe, I mean, you'll do this, but you are going to do it, right? Reach out to her and make sure we're still a go. Yeah. I'm going to reach out to her tomorrow before I order the sandwiches. Good I just want to make sure. Yep. All right. Is there anything so Katie, else? Uh, no, I think no. Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. Okay. So all those in uh, rows, aye. I'm an aye, Rose. Aye. Cliff. Aye. John? Yes. Aaron? Yes. All right. So, four o'clock, Maple Corner Community Center. I will send a note to Cindy just to double confirm. All right. Thank you so much, Katie. Have a good night. Thanks. Everyone. Good night, everybody. It's not a I'm I'm already home. And I didn't yes. freeze up. I didn't freeze up I, once. I, no, and you didn't turn into a pumpkin. <laughs>